Most models, certainly those in economics, cannot exactly capture reality. Rather, they provide useful approximations and frameworks for thinking about the world. The statistician George Box once wrote that all models are wrong, but some are useful. And perhaps the most useful model in economics is the model of supply and demand. This is the model that helps us explain one of the most important concepts in economics, the price of a good. Remember that with each model we cover, we'll discuss the model intuitively, graphically, and in the optional sections of the course, mathematically. So let's start by considering the intuition of the model of supply and demand, using the famous water-diamond paradox explained by Adam Smith. Adam Smith considered the father of economics. His 1776 book, The Wealth of Nation, lays out the core concepts that have formed the basis of modern economics. In this book, Adam Smith poses a puzzle. Think for a moment about water. There's nothing more important in life than water. It's the essential building block of life. Now consider diamonds, perhaps one of the more frivolous goods you can buy. We can all lead perfectly fruitful lives without ever owning a diamond. Yet for most of us, water's basically free and diamonds are super expensive. Why? Because water's plentiful and diamonds are rare. What determines the price of a good is both how much people want it, which we call the demand for the good, and how much of it's available, which we call the supply. The greater the demand, the higher the price. The greater the supply, the lower the price. So while demand for water is very high, supply in most cases is even higher. So water is basically free for most of us. And while demand for diamonds might not be as high as it is for water, it's still much higher than the supply of diamonds. As a result, diamonds are expensive. Adam Smith's point is that you can't think of just one or the other in isolation. Supply and demand work together, jointly determining prices. So that's a bit of intuition. Let's see how we can represent this graphically. Let's talk about the market for roses. A market is just what it sounds like, the place where buyers and sellers interact to set the price of roses. Back in the old days, if you wanted to buy a rose, you'd go to a public market, seek out the flower seller, and negotiate the price of the rose. In today's modern economy, you might go to a store or shop online, review prices, and decide whether or where to buy the rose. But either way, the analysis is the same. The interaction of supply and demand in the market yields the price. Let's represent this market graphically. This type of supply and demand graph is one we'll come back to often. These are some of the most important graphs to master for success on the AP exam. On the x-axis or horizontal axis, we have the quantity of roses produced in the market. In this case, there could be zero roses produced, or 100 roses produced, or 200 roses produced, and so on. On the y-axis or vertical axis, we have the price of roses in the market. In this case, the price could be zero per rose, or one dollar per rose, or two dollar per rose, and so on. The demand curve represents the relationship between price and quantity from the consumer's perspective. It reflects the consumer's willingness to pay for an additional unit of the good. As the price of the good goes up, they want to buy less of that good. We call this the law of demand. Now, why should this be? Well, think back to the concept of opportunity costs. The more expensive something is, the more you have to give up to purchase it, so the less you want it. This means the demand curve is downward sloping. Higher prices lead to lesser quantities demanded by consumers. The supply curve represents the relationship between price and quantity from the producer's perspective. It reflects the producer's willingness to supply goods at a certain price. As the price of the good goes up, they want to produce and sell more of that good. Why? Once again, think about opportunity costs. The more money you can make on selling a good, the more you're willing to produce that good and forego producing other things that you could make. This means the supply curve is upward sloping. Higher prices lead to greater quantities supplied by producers. The price of a good in a market is the price at which the consumer's willingness to pay equals the producer's willingness to supply right here where the curves intersect. We call the point where supply equals demand the equilibrium, the point at which both consumers and producers are happy to engage in this market transaction. 
In this case, consumers are willing to pay $3 per rose for 600 roses. And producers are willing to supply 600 roses at a price of $3 per rose. Everyone's happy. Now this model raises many questions. Where do these curves come from? Why are they shaped the way they are? And what happens on Valentine's Day when everyone's running out at the last minute to buy roses for loved ones? Now that we have the intuition of this fundamental model and its graphical representation, we can begin to address these questions in the lectures that follow.